An American author once said, the oldest and strongest kind of fear is the fear of the unknown. This is a fundamental part of humanity. People are afraid of what they don't see or they don't understand. And this couldn't be more true than in the case of bacteria and other microbes. For the most part, we can see these tiny organisms with our naked eye. And through the media, we are conditioned to fear bacteria. We, when we hear about them, is in context of death or disease. And when we see them, is in our rotten food or the moldy bread. But bacteria are everywhere. Everything you touch, everything you eat, is in our clothes, inside us. They live together with us. Even when we kiss, hopefully you kiss every day, and see it like an act of love and appreciation. But what if you could see the bacteria that is actually in a kiss? Well, this is what happened when I kiss a petri dish. All this bacteria came from my lips. Not so nice anymore. <laughs> you might not want to kiss. <laughs> you might not want to kiss anyone again. Um, but this is uh, this feeling of disgust is just a reaction of fear. Most of the 80 million bacteria exchanged in a kiss are quite uh, harmful. harmful harmless and um, natural. However, as an artist, I look at this uh, and see the inherent beauty that, ba that bacteria possess. These microorganisms are all over the natural world. The beautiful glow of this bottle tail squid coming from a symbiotic relationship with bioluminescent bacteria. Or my favorite bug, Penny bacillus creating these beautiful patterns, fractal patterns by itself. And just as microbes can give us beauty, they can take it away. This coral on your left, red coral full of life on your right, um, because of a degrading habitat, the coral has expelled the protozoan Susan Delay and is left bleached and dead. And how can we forget about the Grand Prismatic Pool at uh, Na Ye Yellowstone National Park? A special heat loving microbes um, create this beautiful rainbow of color. And from this beautiful place to another beautiful place, let me talk to you a little bit about uh, where I grew up. So this is San Vicente de la Barquera. It's a small fishing village uh, on the northern coast of Spain, a natural reserve surrounded by mountains that feed rivers to the Atlantic Ocean. My parents always took me and my siblings for long hikes on the mountains through the forest, walks on the beach. That was part of my daily life. As a child, I was always mesmerized by the patterns of this spectacular nature. The tracks uh, in the sun made by the tides, the leaves and their veins, seeds, seaweed. I found this stone walking on the beach covered in seaweed and it immediately reminded me to a human heart. I collected all these treasures and start creating art with them. I moved to Madrid to study fine arts and nature became my main source of inspiration, as you can see in some of my uh, pieces. Uh, cocoons, nests, chrysalis. This is a huge chrysalis that I made with a swing inside. It's made of wood and hump, and so you can go in and see everything that is going out without anybody seeing you in the inside. Um, seascapes with imaginary creatures. I as well start realizing the correlation in between nature and human nature. I saw the interconnections between organs, the brain, the nervous system, cells, 
and I developed an interest in human biology, which also became another source of inspiration for my art. Six years ago, I moved to Boston, to the Boston area, and my work was uh, on the walls of a local restaurant. And one day, a microbiologist, Memo, there he is, um, <laughs> he, he noticed the biological theme in my art, and he wanted to meet me. So he invited me to his lab at New England Biolabs. It's a biotech company that loves and supports art. Um, it's one of the most beautiful buildings I've ever been. They have art all over the walls, the corridors, outside. They even have a tropical garden inside the building. I love coming here. As an artist, I had no scientific training, but since Memo introduced me to bacteria, I immediately fell in love with them and appreciate their beauty. All the different patterns, patterns shapes, uh, and colors well, is what I was always observing in nature, but at a microscopic level. I wanted to know more, and Memo was willing to teach me. So Memo taught me how to prepare agar, how to pour my own plates, how to make my own cultures, how to grow colonies. He taught me how to um, manipulate bacteria in a safe and sterilized manner. I started using bacteria as if it was paint, except the big difference is that this paint is alive. It moves and changes constantly. When I paint with bacteria, I don't really see what I'm doing. I have to wait for days, sometimes weeks, to see the result. I experiment with time, temperature, and different conditions. Each bacteria grows differently. Some of them like heat, some of them like uh, cold. Some grows faster than other ones. It's a whole process full of surprises. This is my bench. I work under a propane torch to sterilize the loop that I'm painting with. I usually have from eight to 10 little petri dishes with the bacteria that I'm going to use. And this is a movie to show you how I work. I sterilize the loop, cool it down, touching the agar, and grab a tiny bit of bacteria and start painting in the big plate. I have to be very fast uh, while I paint. I can leave the, paint, the, the plate open for more than five or 10 seconds because of contamination. And so my canvas now is a Petri dish filled with agar. My, paint, my paintbrush became a platinum rod. My palette is bacteria and my lab became my studio. And this is how I begin the challenge of exploring art through a completely new media. After more, more than three years working really hard uh, to develop my own technique, I got to this point. And now I'm gonna show you my palette. Uh, it's made of four different bacteria. Some are contaminations that Memo accidentally find in his research, uh, like Arthobacter or Nestenconia. Um, others are used at New England Biolabs for making proteins, the orange Deinococcus or the red Sriracha. Another group is genetically engineered bacteria that expresses chromogenic proteins making them have artificial color. Uh, tinsel, cupid, prancer, the purples on your left. And the last one, I love this kind of bacteria, is uh, just random bacteria that we found in different everyday objects. The first one I, uh, is from my house skin, and the second one is bacteria from my lips. Uh, now I'm gonna show you some samples of my artwork. Here I'm using genetically engineered bacteria. It's hard to work with because it's very sticky. 
Um, here I'm using Arto Arthobacter, Santomonas and Nestemconia. Arthobacter, the, gray, the bright red likes to likes the cold, so I paint before with the other two, put them in the in the incubator, and then at the end add the Arthobacter and put it in the fridge. Um, this one over here is the one that I saw you in the movie, and as you can see, all the white spots around the plate is uh, are contamination. That's because I left the plate open more than I should have. Um, this one over here is uh, Bacillus uh, and Nesterconia and Siracha. With this piece, I learned that uh, Bacillus grows, is the one, the, the bacteria that grows faster than, than the other ones that I'm working with. Mm. I started using, uh, I started using um, insects, leaves, flowers, seeds, and other things that I find in nature. As you can see in this one, I, there is a dragonfly. I paint the wings and then I put the dragonfly on top and seal it with resin. We seal the artwork in resin, so it allows us to preserve the art and handle it safely. Those, yeah. This is my um, last, uh, my most recent piece. Um, I use Arthobacter, Santomonas, and Bacillus. And as you can see in the drawing, I was able to outline the the leaf with Bacillus without interfering with the other bacteria, and that was a huge achievement. Believe it, believe it or not. Um, after creating all these pieces. Memo and I were thinking in putting together a, an exhibit to show our artwork. And we saw a competition by American Society of Microbiology, and we decided to submit some of our images. To our surprise, we won the first place, the f the first place with neurons and the people choice with cell to cell. We also make time-lapse movies at the lab. Uh, this is a special chamber that we designed for this purpose. There is a box made of wood with plexiglass in the inside with a lid. It's a camera connected to a um, computer that takes pictures every 10 minutes. Um, we let it run for five or 10 days, sometimes more, if we like what is going on in the Petri dish. And the chamber is as well controlled uh, to make sure the conditions are good for bacteria to grow. So we noticed another art competition organized by FASEP um, that, wo that was accepting video entries. And we submitted one of our time-lapse movies. I'm going to show you. We won as well. And <laughs> Here you can see the Arthobacter growing while <coughs> blooms of Bacillus opens after. It turns out that uh, these images can help change the way people see bacteria. Because of these awards, the media start paying attention to what we were doing with combining bacteria with art. We hope this art start changing the public dialogue on bacteria, that starts losing our fear to the unseen and the unknown. Yes, some microbes are frightening, but for the most part are not. Out of the 30 million species of bacteria on our planet, only 70 species are harmful. Microbes are responsible for most, for some of the most beautiful life and landscapes on this earth. By making microbes visible as art, we hope to reset society's thinking about these microorganisms. And the most wonderful thing about resetting our thinking of something that we fear is that it lets, lets curiosity to take command, leading us to discoveries that can change the world. Thank you for listening, and remember, bacteria are beautiful.